So he, so you're where? I was just in the middle of the field. You're in the middle of the field? Yeah. Was this at recess? It was at, so you know when you, uh, when you first arrive at school and then there's a bunch of kids on the playground? Mm-hmm. Well, I was in the middle of the field just playing. And then, and then he just walked up to me, took a look at me, and then said, you're too black. That was in the morning? Yes. Okay. And then you said what? I, I said, well, I don't think I'm too black. I think my skin is beautiful. Perfect answer. And then, so that's when you guys just went back and forth with the I disagree? Yep. Okay. Well... I understand like when you're saying you feel like you were bullied and that's a perfectly valid feeling, I'm just going to point out that I don't think you were bullied. I think you stood up for yourself. I think he tried to bully you. How about that? I think he tried, but it didn't work because you stood up for yourself. So I'm not saying he wasn't a bully, but he didn't get what he wanted. He thought he was going to be able to talk something like that to you, say something like that to you, and then you were going to like, like wilt down or feel bad or you know what I mean? You didn't do any of that. You stood up like a strong person, a strong black person, a strong black woman, okay? So I'm not saying you should not feel bullied. If that's how you feel, I want you to express that and share that. But I would just point out that it's kind of like if somebody came up and tried to punch you and you either blocked it or ducked, they didn't get what they wanted, did they? They wanted to punch me and I defended myself. Right. So he didn't get what he wanted out of that circumstance because he thought he was going to walk up and be able to insert his entitlement, which is him being a white male thinking he could just walk up and say whatever he wanted to. Now, we do have something in this country called freedom of speech. Freedom of speech. Yes, you have the right to say whatever you want, so long as it's not to the detriment of other people or it causes harm. So, for instance, I can't walk into a crowded movie theater and yell fire if it's not true. Because what happens is my, my words now can create a circumstance where people could get hurt trying to get out of a building they think is on fire. So you can't do that. But he has the right to walk up and express that opinion to you. But the consequence to that is you have the right to tell him, no, I'm not. I'm beautiful. And in some cases, people will say even meaner things like they'll use just bad words towards people and say, well, I think you're, you know, a dirty black person or whatever. And you know what happens sometimes to those people? Somebody punches them right in the mouth. I'm not telling you to punch them in the mouth. What I'm saying is there is a consequence. So at school, if you feel like he's bullying you and and that's not um, something that's going to go away, what should his consequence be? What is an action you can take for him rather than punch him in the mouth? Tell on the teacher. Tell the teacher, absolutely. Because one, you stood up for yourself. And then two, your next action is to utilize the system that is there to protect you, which is your teachers. So, one, the first thing is you stood up for yourself. And before that, you even knew who you, who you were. That's how you were able to stand up for yourself. So do you understand now why when I say, tell me three things about yourself, do you understand what that does for you now? This is why I have, since you were very small, I've always told you, give me three things about yourself. That way you know who you are. So when people like this kid come up and tell you that you're too black, you're too short, you're not good enough because you're a girl, or you're not smart enough, or you're not fast enough. No, you know that you are because you've already been telling yourself that. You've been sharing with me those things as to who you are. That's why we do those. I can't explain that to you, But now does it make sense to you? Because now you knew who you were in a moment where somebody tried to tell you that's not who you are. Does that make sense? Right. Or that you're not good enough. So that's why three things matters. That's why when we do those exercises, it matters for you to know who you are. On top of which, now, so we know, one, to know who we are. You knew, two, to stand up for yourself. 
you knew three that punching him in the mouth was not a, was not an appropriate response. Right. So moving forward, you know that if he bothers you again, number four would be to what? Tell the teacher. Tell, let a teacher know exactly. Do you know who this? Do you know his name? Um, no. Okay, that's fine. But what I want you to do is not feel bad about this. This is a win. This is a major win because your first time out and having to experience garbage like that, you you won. You passed your test. You know what I mean? I won? You won. You passed the test that a lot of people don't understand. Is Life is always having a test. There are tests and there's lessons everywhere. You learn today that in the face of ignorance and hatred, you stood up for yourself and said, no, this is exactly what Harriet Tubman did. This is what Rosa Parks did. This is what Dr. King fought for. This is what your grandparents met Dr. King and marched with him for. Okay? You did, You embodied all of your ancestors in one moment and said, no, no, I'm good enough. Do you get it? Yeah. Awesome. Be proud of yourself, Cheeky. Be very proud. Now let's get in and have some pizza. Yay! Do you get it? So, for all of you who don't understand, this is what many black parents have to explain to their children because of your children. Now, I am sure that there are families of all walks who have to explain something to their children, but I am talking about black parenting right now. And these are children that, do I think the parents are outright teaching them that? No. But are they teaching them something other than that? No. Now the same way that women are always talking about teach your sons to respect boundaries with girls and things like that, which I completely agree with, then teach your children to stop being racial. I understand that kids have to see like some sort of identity or whatever. They don't have to speak that way. And if you're not instilling that in them before they even speak it, then you're failing. You're failing as a parent. Stop acting entitled. Stop acting like because the majority of people look like you and your children, somehow it doesn't matter. This matters. It matters to us as parents, it's going to matter on society at large for their future, for all these kids' futures. This is why I teach my daughters. <clears throat> and if people are upset at the notion of strong black females and strong black men, <laughs> get used to it because so long as there's something to have to push back against like that garbage I grew up with that anybody who's black is most likely grown up with that this is why there's pushback and I don't want to hear about Chicago and I don't want to hear about black on black crime because there's actually more white on white crime if we're getting down to it skip that and if you're even thinking that you're the problem teach your kids better Black History Month does not have to be relegated to February. And if it makes you feel better, sugarcoat it and call it American history. But start teaching them about values, real values. Besides, it's not up to the school to educate your children on how to act like actual human beings. They are there to put a system an indoctrinated system of educated levels into them. But teaching them to, how to be a human, that starts at home. To be a decent person, that starts at home. Do better, because a lot of you are failing, and you think that it's just enough just to give your kids, you know, Teddy Grahams and, you know, in a juice box when they get home. Start educating your children. Start teaching your children. And I get it. A lot of you weren't taught either and you don't know. But in this day and age with social media, what you have access to in the palm of your hands, what most of you are watching me through right now in the palm of your hands, gives you access to learn anything you want to.
you can learn how to change a catalytic, catalytic converter, the plumbing in your house, and a lot of you do it. And start learning about the walk and the plight of other people. And don't tell me about pants sagging. Don't tell me about hip hop. Don't tell me about crack sales. Don't tell me about any of that. Your confirmed bias is failing you and it's failing your children. And I will have this conversation. I will help educate anyone who does not understand. Inbox me. Leave it in the comment. Get outside of yourself. The same way we tell men, learn boundaries and all this and that. What's the difference? If a boy wasn't taught any different, how is he supposed to suddenly know? And if his father wasn't taught any better, how is he supposed to know? How, are, how is it on other groups to self-correct? Get educated. You can, go, you can go to school. You take seminars. You take all sorts of classes. You watch things for, you know, um, learning on, online, all of that stuff. You can learn this. Or you can just, like, reach out to somebody who doesn't look like you and ask them say I really need to have this talk and if they don't give you satisfying answers or they are as ignorant as you are in that capacity then ask someone else we go to multiple sources we go to multiple sources if the price on the tires aren't right I'm gonna go someplace else or if you don't like what the doctor told you I'm gonna get a second opinion go learn from multiple sources it's not hard it's not hard but as long as you sit complacent and sleeping then don't don't push back against people who, who have awakened. Don't push back against the enlightened if you're still sitting in the dark. Am I pissed? No, I couldn't be more proud. But I am dead serious.